Welcome to my backyard and to the fifth clip dedicated to light. Today we're going to talk about a constant. Actually, we're going to talk about more than one constant, but the speed of light will be one of them. But we're also going to talk about beliefs and credibility because it is even more important. Remember the experiment with the spoon? In the past 15 years, I must have tried it thousands of times. But now, a lot of you have tried it too. So, we may have passed a millions of attempts. Every time, there is a drawing force. But imagine that today, on the news, somebody famous shows up and says, there is no drawing force in the spoon experiment. The water protects the spoon. Would you believe that person? If he said that, chances are that most of us would believe him because we have been influenced in believing in his credibility. But if he said that, None of us would believe him, because he is not known to be famous for anything scientific. You see what I mean? What we believe in is not determined by whatever it makes sense or not. It is determined by who says it. Imagine now that today on the news we learn that this person believes in this person Guess what? We don't believe him anymore. You see what I mean? What we believe in is not determined by whether it makes sense or not. It is determined by the credibility we give to the one saying it. We will come back to that later. I'm going back to the sink. Do you remember the patterns of the reflections in the water? Do you remember the four actions I used to throw the ball? Do you remember Mr. Smiley Face? They all indicated the presence of a drawing force, just like the experiment shows the presence of a drawing force. Now we're going to bring in some new words to check on our reality. I'm going to change drawing force for something else. Let's try attraction. The spoon is attracted to the other side of the stream. Now let's try desire. system desires a spoon. Now let's try absorption. Works again. The spoon is absorbed by the system. Let's try aspiration. Let's try wanting. All those words relate to a drawing force. All those words relate to my reality. They are all constants in my reality because they are what happens to me constantly. How about you? Let's try something else. See that when I don't touch the stream, it is perfectly straight. But when it is in contact with the spoon, it becomes flexed. Imagine if it was happening constantly. 
It was happening over and over. Flexion. Flexion again. Repetition of the flexion. Repetition of the flexion. Reflection. Reflection. But that would only be a coincidence. Another coincidence. Would you like another one? Did you know that when someone dies, their brain collapses? Just like that. Now I will separate the drawing force into two stages. The first stage will be the act of taking that will produce the movement and the second stage will be the act of retaining giving the impression of a static state after the movement is ended. Movement leading to a static state. Taking and retaining. Let's try the word taking in another language. Let's say Latin. In Latin, taking is perceptio. How funny, it reminds me of perception. But that would be another coincidence. Taking and retaining. Perception and retention. Memory? That is a lot of coincidences. Now I'm gonna put all those new words in a jar and mix them up. Attraction. Desire. Aspiration. Taking. Retaining. Perception. Memory. We should end up with a word representing all the others and corresponding to a force motivating all our intentions and all our actions. See what we got. When we look at it that way, inspiration seems to be our reality. It almost looks like a constant in our reality. But we are not here to talk about reality and inspiration. We are here to talk about the speed of light. We hear a lot about the speed of light, but we never hear anything about the force or the energy that would generate the speed. When I throw the ball, the throw is the energy that generates the speed. But for light, it seems to be different. We seem to assume that light comes with its own energy, since light is a form of energy. It is weird that light would be an exception to physics. But luckily, there is a formula that can help us check that out. Let's use the formula and verify the energy of light. The energy of light is equal to its mass. What is the mass of light? Zero. 
Well, when there is a zero in an equation, it doesn't matter what we multiply it by. The total will equal zero. So the formula that uses the speed of light as a constant to determine energy tells us that light has no energy and that with zero energy it still has the power to generate its own speed 300,000 kilometers per second mystery do you think anybody can explain that do you think anybody can explain that mystery nobody knows how that could be everybody ignores so let's try to find a word that would define a belief or a practice resulting from ignorance superstition superstition myth myth superstition what's the difference when you believe in things you don't understand Superstition is the way. Did you ever think that if the speed of light was a constant, it couldn't be stopped? A constant speed cannot change. That means that light would go through everything and that shadows would not exist. Oh. Scientists tell us that the speed of light is a constant 300,000 kilometers per second. But they also tell us that around ultimate zero it could be slowed down to around 55 kilometers per hour. That's quite a change for a constant speed. Or are they telling us that 55 kilometers per hour is equal to 300,000 kilometers per second? That doesn't look like a constant to me. But what does look like a constant is our willingness to believe whatever we're told. I cannot conceive that with zero energy, light would have less energy than this ball resting on the ground just because the ball has a mass. But this was only the beginning. It has evolved into the equation of quantum theory. This one. This equation supposedly will explain everything. But of course, it will not explain desires, aspiration, reflection, or any of those things. It is the theory of everything that excludes most things. Do you see what I mean? In this equation, mystery is used one time. In this one, the mystery is used six times and that will explain everything I have a question for you how reliable are all those scientists brains if they believe that 55 kilometers per hour and 300,000 kilometers per second are a constant speed how reliable are they if in the experiment they believe that the water protects the spoon, don't they all believe that the cerebral spinal fluid protects the brain? How much did it cost to build that underground lab in Switzerland? Nice. I think it's time for us to get rid of some beliefs. The speed of light is a myth. It is the speed of visual perception and it is very unlikely that it would have a constant speed. A constant speed 
can only emerge from a constant force. Look at those two guys. This one has a very large brain, therefore very large lobes on his visual cortex and he has a heart rate of 12 beats a minute. This one has a very small brain, therefore the lobes of his visual cortex are very tight arcs and he has a heart rate of about 800 beats a minute. How could those different forces generate the same speed? I will get rid of the myth with origami. Theories are only assumptions trying to influence our beliefs. The spoon experiment is our experience. Can you imagine if we started to believe everything we're told just because we believe that other people's minds are more reliable than our own? We could end up believing in things like Muslims are bad or Jews are bad or Christians are bad or atheists are bad or black people are bad or Asians are bad. Imagine, it could create discrimination and we would end up having conflicts all over the planet. Constant conflicts. backyard. Now while I do that, I want you to stop your reverse discrimination. to stop believing that other people's minds are so much more reliable than your own that you can let them dictate what you believe in. You are a drawing force. You are the destination of the movements you produce. That is a constant. When the movement of a fluid is directly put in contact with a convexity of a curve, it creates a drawing force. The drawing force has the power to produce the act of taking 
followed by the act of retaining. See you later.